Joe Talks, period. Yeah, quick moment with y'all. Something for your dome peace. Dome peace. Shalom, shalom, all my brothers and sisters, all my kings and queens, prince and princesses, everybody out here holding it down in this truth, waiting for that new kingdom to come. So in news today, we got Myers Leonard, who has been suspended indefinitely for using anti-Semitic slurs such as kite. But it's funny because the term or phrase Shemitic stems from one of the forefathers of the Bible, whom is Shem. Shem went on to birth a lot of sons or be the progenitor of a lot of sons these sons birthed a lot of nations one of the sons of Shem was Abraham essentially making Abraham Shemitic Abraham birthed Ishmael Ishmael birthed the nation known as the Ishmaelites Abraham also birthed Isaac Isaac also birthed the nation known as the Edomites he birthed Esau, excuse me, Isaac also birthed Esau, who also was the progenitor of the nation known as the Edomites. Isaac also birthed Jacob, who was also the progenitor of the nation known as Israelites. Ishmaelites, in today's rule, we would call them Arabs. Edomites, in today's rule, we would call a white person or a white man or white woman so-called Israelites we would call African-American Negro nigga whatever you can think of that God don't call us it's so much uproar about anti-semitism but what's more anti-semitic than leaving a nation in the dark about the truest divinity of themselves. It's more than one Shemitic family, and it is not just the so called Jewish people. First used in the 1770s by the, God the Godagians in the School of History. Damn, I don't went blind again. Salakia, pardon me. The biblical terminology for race, excuse me, let me start over. First used in the 1770s by members of the Gadigian School of History, this biblical terminology for race was derived from Shem, one of the three sons of Noah in the book of Genesis, together with the, par the parables, the parallel terms, Hamites, and the Jephetites, Japhetites, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that word wrong, feel free to pronounce it better for me when doing your own research. So, if Shem birthed multiple nations and went on to birth Abraham, who actually went on to be the progenitor or one of the forefathers of so-called white man, of so-called Arabs, of so-called African Americans. We are all in fact Shemitic. Therefore, calling me a nigga is anti-Semitism. Calling me an African American is anti-Semitism. It's really that's plain and simple. Why aren't there any out? There, there's no outrage for things like that, though. Instead, we had we would have people believe that they're anti-Semitic for using a slur that downgrades so-called Jews, so-called Jews. Let's see. Shem also. Um, Shem also, or yeah, Shem also birthed Terah, who birthed Haran, who birthed Lot, and Lot was the progenitor 
of Amman and Moab's and these are our Asian nations of today so y'all really got to stop the incompetence of calling someone anti-semitic how can we be anti you I'm not anti me you're anti me you want to call me a black man you want to refer to me as an African-American. You want to refer to me as a Negro or Afrocentric or a nigga or, or, or just anything that God don't call me. And that's very anti-Semitic. When coming to conclusion of who you are in the Bible, if you go over the certain curses, we may fit these curses. Allow, allow me to go into my notes, if you will. Or let me do this because I got my King James right here and I'd be more than happy to give you just one of the curses, one of the curses, just one of the curses that a so-called people are actually dealt with and are still dealing with the cause and effect of it today. Deuteronomy 28. I'm really blind. My, I'm really blinding myself with this light. So y'all bear with me. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 Bear with me Bear with me And the Lord shall bring thee Into Egypt Again with ships Egypt is synonymous with bondage when you look at our money, if you look to the back of it, you will see a pyramid. Pyramids are in Egypt. Egypt's, Egypt is synonymous with bondage. As you know, the story of Exodus talks about a certain nation known as the Israelites who went through 450 years of bondage in Egypt. And I go on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof to spake unto thee. Thou shalt, oh man, this damn light is blind to me. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto, there, there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond man and bond woman, and no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall rescue you. No man shall do anything for you. We shall go into that captivity. Again, when you look on the back of your American dollar, you will see a pyramid that symbolizes the bondage that we are still in amongst this rule, amongst this American Gentile Babylonian rule, whatever you want to call it. So I just really get kind of annoyed by it. I really do. Because. The so-called Jews in Israel and Jerusalem at the moment are actually not Jews. Is there any document that shows you white people going into captivity on ships? Please somebody show me. Are there any images, documentation of white people going into captivity on ships being sold unto their enemies. Yes, we know of the Holocaust, which was actually a rebel by Hitler because he had a disdain for what a certain nation had done. If you do your research, you will, and I'm not condoning what Hitler did in full. If you look up your, if you, find, if you do research, you'll find out that Hitler states when they find out what these people did, he will start World War III. For they stole God's jewels. Shorten jewels up to Jew and come to find out Jew is actually an abbreviation or nickname that God gave a certain tribal nation by the name of Judah. This is the same tribe as Jesus Christ. Um... Being anti-Semitic doesn't necessarily make you a Jew. 
No, it does not. It just simply means you are connected to the lineage of Shem. That's all that means. The Jew nations, the, excuse me, the Jew nation, Judah tribe, is of Jacob, who is the progenitor of the Israelites, which is a nation that consists of 12 tribes, Jews being one of them. Because as I stated, everybody can't be a Jew necessarily. Jew is just a shortened abbreviation of a tribe that went by Judah amongst the ordinances of Yahweh, also known as God, amongst the Gentile rule. It is way, 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 way more than just one Shemitic nation. Asians are Shemitic. Arabians are Shemitic. White people are Shemitic. I don't believe any of us are anti-us. So, when calling someone anti-Semitic, you're absolutely a foolery. Or, or, pardon me, uneducated, or ill-informed, and just unknown. Please understand that if I was Myers Leonard, I'd be using my white privilege to the fullest and suing the shit out of the NBA for defamation of character based on what I've come to learn. I repeat, there are way more than just one Shemitic nation. Some Shemitic is a is a word derived from the forefather, one of the forefathers of the Bible known as Shem. His father was Noah who also had Ham and Japheth, who also were the progenitors of Hamites and Japhethites. If I'm saying that right, if I'm saying that wrong, please forgive me. Please understand, there was nothing more anti-Semitic than the transatlantic slave trade and the Saharian slave trade. There is nothing more anti-Semitic than being referred to as an African American. There is nothing more anti-Semitic than being referred to as a Negro, as a nigga, or anything else outside this Bible, the King James Version, and only the King James Version. It is time for us as black folks to accept who, yeah, that's a, it is nothing more anti-Semitic than calling me black. Period. It's time for us as so-called black people to learn these things so that we can, we, we can restore our spirit and understand the truest divinity of ourselves. Those people, those so-called Jews in Israel, in Jerusalem at the moment are 1948 culverts that were dropped off there after World War II. When you go to Psalms 83 verses 3 through 8, you will find that it was crafty counsel amongst nations outside of Israel to leave us in the dark about our true selves. OK, there's nothing more anti-Semitic than that. Period. OK, America was funded and built and restored of anti-Semitism. Please understand that. Please accept that. Please know that. There is nothing more anti-Semitic than, than to refer to an Ishikar Israelite as a Mexican. There is nothing more anti-Semitic than to refer to a Gad Israelite 
as a Native American Indian. That is very anti-Semitic. That isn't what God calls these people. These are Israelites or so are Jews, if you will. Please understand that. America was built and funded of anti-Semitism. Being Semitic does not make you a Jew. What makes you a Jew is these curses that you can relate to in this Bible. Now, I'm not an ordained teacher, but I am willing to teach things that have not been taught the best way I can. And I am telling y'all right now, we are Shemitic, but we are not Jew. It's that simple. We are all Shemitic, but we are all not Jew. Jewish means somewhat like. The reason the people, the reason these people call themselves Jewish, because they know that they are not actually Jews. Why? Because they don't fit any of these curses. As I stated, the people in this land now are white people. There are no there are no documentations or images of people white people being taken away on ships and held captive by their own enemies. There's no record of that. There's no record of that. And there's nothing more anti-Semitic than to have these things unrevealed. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it on up. And let me bring, let me, um, let me bring one more scripture out for you because I'm not really with all the talk. Me and my ox, we like to bring the Bible out. We like to bring God out. See, you're not going to make me any kind of idol. This is God's work. This is God's doing. Allow me to go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. And then I'm going to wrap it up. And I hope y'all enjoy y'all night. And I hope y'all really, I pray, I pray and hope we all accept these things. America was built on anti-Semitism. <clears throat> Bear with me, please. Bear with me. Damn, I don't really blind to myself. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, man. Salaki, please forgive me. I cannot see right now. Okay. 28, Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Oh, man, that's crazy. There we go. There we go. Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fall with longing for them all the day long and there shall be no might in thine hand now that sound like a root special when the kizzy when the kizzy uh getting getting sold to another family and it wasn't nothing uh, uh kunta and them could do about it i mean kunta couldn't do a damn thing i mean that, that does that sound like a, that sound like a roots scene to me you know uh, eight, twelve years a slave, whatever the title of the movie is. That sound like you know, you know that that's what that sound like to me. Oh, and we not done though. Me and my ox, the Watchman for Israel, I U I C, W O I. We're not done. I mean, this thing got plenty of licks, plenty of cuts in it that'll help you understand what America is built on. When you go to Daniel seven twenty five. You will find out Daniel was prophesizing how our time would be changed. But as I said, I'm going to wrap it up right here. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Just understand that America was built on 
anti-Semitism. America is built on a passionate hate for the actual Jews of this book. Know that. Know that. I don't, I don't recall any white folks. You cannot find any images of white folks having their sons and daughters taken away, sold to, white, sold to black folks, sold to Asians, sold to Arabs, sold to Assyrians. You can't find that. But you can damn sure find you some black folks getting sold to white folks and everywhere else. You can find that thing. You can find that thing. I bet everyone a shalom, shalom, you know. You know, I would advise everybody wind down, enjoy the Lord's work, sip you some yan yan. You know what I mean? That's Hebrew for wine. You know, that's our language. You know, we like to say, me and my brothers, we like to speak some Hebrew. That's our father's language. He, they gave that to us. You know what I'm saying? Sip on some yan yan. You know, kick back, relax, and put your mind on God. All right, all right, all right. Shalom, shalom, everybody enjoy their night.